I'm Stacy, the encaustic mixed media artist behind Studio Stacy. For the past eight years, I have worked, created, and painted out of this light filled studio here in Northeast Ohio. But all of that is about to change. Don't worry, I will still be painting and experimenting with beeswax and a torch. It's just going to be in a slightly different location. So come along on this journey, consider subscribing, and join this artsy community. Good morning. We are headed off to West Virginia to the new property to get some work done this weekend. All right. What will it look like? Oh, this is going to be a disaster. It was awfully bumpy coming down. <laughs> the roads of PA. Oh. Oh, well. Straps <laughs> are still intact and everything. It's really not bad. Huh. All right, well, I think, I think we're all right, guys. Time Woo. to unload. Also, if it snows in Ohio again, it's going to be completely our fault. It's because we've decided to move the snowblower because hopefully we won't need it again. Good morning from West Virginia. The sun is out. The birds are chirping. I don't know if you can hear them in the background. It's a little chilly of a start, but um, we've had our breakfast and we are pretty caffeinated and we are ready to start the day here in lovely Morgantown. We are in the studio and that back there is hopefully going to get installed at some point in time today. The day once again has gotten away from us, but um, we're hoping to get most of it done. Hence the safety glasses on. Pretty soon we're going to have masks and gloves. So um, <laughs> cute. <laughs> so anyways, let's get to insulating. one side pretty much insulated and then I have we're putting <laughs> sorry about the huge mess on the table there you can ignore that but we're putting this six mil plastic up for a um, vapor barrier next also we uh, really have no idea what we're doing here so um, hopefully this is correct <laughs> Good morning, day two of insulation here in the studio. We got quite a bit done yesterday, almost done. Um, there's a few more things we wanna get done today. So we're gonna work for a couple more hours here in the morning. Um, it is supposed to get up to 80 today, which is crazy insane. So um, we're gonna try to get some of this stuff done because we have to be in long sleeves, mask, all that stuff before it gets too hot. So um, let me flip the camera around and I'll show you what we've gotten done so far. Okay, so we pretty much have an entire wall there done. Don't mind that electric cord in the middle of the screen. Just a little bit over in that corner to do. And then, say good morning, Matt. Good morning, Matt. <laughs> and then, this wall is again pretty much done except for 
that corner over there, which I think we're going to leave for the time being because the electric box is over there and we need to do a few things uh, with that electric box. And then we have this back wall here that needs some more stuff done. And I, I'm trying to decide, I'm going to eventually, I think, take out this um, little tiny wood burner stove. It's super cute, but I just can't see myself using it a whole lot in the studio. And we might eventually put it into our living space in the pole barn. So we're debating about taking this out today or leaving it in and insulating around it. Not knowing exactly what we're doing here with the insulation and really in general with converting a existing shed into an art studio takes a little bit of time, probably more time than any experts out there that know exactly what they're doing. But I just wanted to take a quick moment and say we are enjoying this process and I really strongly believe in just taking a leap and trying to learn as much as you possibly can, doing things safely, but also just going for it. So if you have a project that you're unsure about, I say do a little research and then just take the leap and go for it. All right, we almost got all of the insulation done. We unfortunately ran out of insulation, which is why it's not all completely done. Um, just a few more spots left, and basically I think I'm gonna need one more bag of it, and that should do it in here. Of course, I still have the ceiling to go and have to figure out what to do with that, and then I'm gonna probably put something down on the floor whether it's a vapor barrier or just insulation, I'm honestly not 100% sure on that yet, but we're getting there. On a completely different side note, I think this is an apple tree. Anybody know for sure? The previous owner built a um, cage around it I'm assuming to keep the deer out but um, it's really pretty and I'm hoping maybe in a few years we'll have some apples hello <laughs> today's project is tearing those white cabinets out of the studio that is going to be the next trip down to West Virginia we're taking those cabinets and that slate top. So um, that is today's project. Hey YouTubers! Some people think slate is used for playing pool. Not Stacy. Let's tear this thing apart so we can move it. Just to give you a backstory in case you're new around here on this work table top. This slate was from an old pool table, actually Matt's childhood pool table, that we cut apart and installed onto these white cabinets to make myself a large workspace and work table. morning and happy Tuesday. Today is Tuesday. So easy to lose a track of the days these days. Um, at any rate, I am going to be painting again today and I just wanted to pop on here real quick before I started the painting video and just say thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone's so, they were just been wonderful, sweet, the nicest comments about our move and the new property and um, 
about kind of taking things slowly and um, I just really want to thank you for sticking with us along on this lovely adventure. And also after saying that I want to preface the future videos going forward after this one. I am hoping to paint one more painting still here in the Ohio studio. However, I am not sure I'm going to get that kind of squeezed in. I'm trying really hard not to put too much pressure on um, to create videos and paintings and also move, although I want to do all of those things. So that being said, um, there's a ton of stuff. I <laughs> did not realize this, although, you know, you have these grand ideas and you think, oh, it's only gonna take a uh, you know, couple hours or something like that. But um, converting a shed into a studio is proving to be a little bit more challenging than what I initially thought. So I'm spending a lot of time doing research and things like that these days. So again, all of that to be said, I just wanted to let you know, I will definitely keep you all posted. Um, the best way to stay connected is in the community tab here on YouTube under my channel. I'll put the link down below if I remember, hopefully I remember, but I will post there any updates or if there's not going to be a video, anything like that going forward in the future. Fingers crossed there's still gonna be one more video painting video after this, but I will definitely keep you posted. So now back to today's painting video. Let's get painting. I thought I'd do a quick underpainting as usual with this sketch. And so I'm gonna be just going over the few basic supplies. First is watercolor paint. And then I'm also using some Derwent Ink Tense pencils, a couple paintbrushes, of course, some water, and my painting apron, of course. So um, yeah, back to the painting video. Hope you guys enjoy. to touch on uh, two topics here while I'm putting down this clear encaustic medium. The first one is safety when using encaustic with paper. So I'm sure um, all of you know that paper obviously is flammable. So normally I would use my heat gun with this and I always recommend if you're starting out with encaustic and paper to use something like a heat gun where there's not a flame at the end of it and your paper can easily catch on fire. Again, especially if you're not used to working with encaustic and paper or have never worked with encaustic before in the past. The other point of safety to make while using a torch with the paper is the first pass I make, I go over that paper really quickly with a torch, paying special attention not to hit the edges at all. And uh, this just ensures nothing catches on fire, or at least for me, it ensures that. I also have a fire extinguisher nearby. Then once I get several layers of that encaustic, clear encaustic medium down, I can start going over it a bit slower with the torch and because nothing's gonna catch on fire, the paper is now fully coated with the encaustic medium. Again, you don't wanna let the torch sit in one spot for too long because that will create like a hole or a divot in the wax 
and you could eventually reach to the paper. So um, just words of caution when using a torch with paper and a really a torch, a torch in general with encaustic. And the other thing I wanted to touch on briefly has to do with creating a smooth surface. Now, um, this is tricky to do, especially if you're a beginner encaustic painter. And what I can honestly say is practice, 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 practice. <laughs> Just like with everything, practice um, will eventually get you to where you wanna be. And also you'll learn what works for you and what doesn't work for you. So what works for you might not work for me and vice versa. So practice. Um, then the other thing I wanted to touch on with getting a smooth and caustic surface is your scrapers, especially with the paper, because these edges curl up. So I tend to get a little bit more buildup on the edges with in paper than I do on the cradled wood panels because the panels aren't curling up. So um, the scraper becomes your best friend and sometimes you need to go in and fill in in certain areas that the brush has skipped over, um, which is perfectly normal. So you'll discover this through practice. And also if you're an encaustic artist and you have any tips about creating a, a smooth surface, leave them down below in the comments. I am sure I could pick up on something and many other people could pick up on your tips as well. where I'm going to leave you for the day. Well, actually, I know this is where I'm going to leave you for the day. Um, the studio is a complete disaster. <laughs> That's what happens when you get out all of the art supplies for a true mixed media encaustic painting. Um, this one, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I really liked how it was going in the beginning and then towards the end, it kind of became more of a struggle. So I'm not completely convinced on it. And I don't know if I'm not completely convinced on it because of how um, my day has gone this afternoon. Um, I got, my autoimmune system is acting up lately and um, I have to go for some more tests and um, some other personal junk is going on. Fingers crossed it all goes well. I think it's going to. Um, I'm not feeling bad, but you know, certain parts of me are being, I think, um, attacked, <laughs> if you will, by this lovely autoimmune. At any rate, I'm not going to dwell on that. I'm going to have positive thoughts and um, good vibes, but I'm just not sure if that's why I'm not convinced on this painting. You know how you get in those moods and just nothing seems to look good or go well, even though it might not actually be that bad. So, um, at any rate, I'm going to leave you here for this afternoon. I will hopefully, fingers crossed, pick you guys back up this weekend down in West Virginia. So um, let me know what you guys think of the painting. All right, see you shortly. Good morning from West Virginia. Uh, we brought a load in from our house, mainly garage stuff and a few storage things, but at any rate, brought a load in, got in late last night, and also picked up that insulation that we ran out of for the studio, along with some wall material and some ceiling material and some floor insulation. So um, we're gonna see how far we get this weekend, but as you can see, it's a little windy out and a little chilly this morning, but the sun's out, so that's good. Also, you may have noticed this huge rig here. The well guy has dropped off the rig to drill the well. So um, that's exciting. Hopefully that will start soon. Lots of insulation. 
and back in there more insulation yay there you go tight they are in here <laughs> it's pink look at that that's crazy after a few mishaps with the pink insulation, which I will explain here coming up, we decided to just go ahead and start on adding more of the wall paneling into the studio. So hope you're enjoying this construction portion of the video, but sit back, enjoy some music, and here we go. Alright, yesterday was a bit of a frustrating day. I don't know if you can hear me over the rain, but this is what we got done. Some paneling put up on the wall. And this insulation right here was supposed to go up in the ceiling up there. And you could see we've got one up there. But the problem is it's for attics and flooring, but it sticks out. It is um, 10 inches thick and, and the rafters in the ceiling are just two by fours. They're not like your normal traditional attic rafters. And I ordered this when we were at home and didn't have the dimensions of this rafters and didn't think to look at it. And then yesterday realized it was going to stick out way too much. So I think what we're going to do is put the green foam that I got for the flooring up in the ceiling because the flooring is also an issue. I was initially thinking we were going to rip up the existing flooring, but to do that we would have to cut along the edges and then I'm not sure exactly how we would get it back in. Ooh. There's some thunder. So again, hopefully you can hear me, but you see that uh, ledge right there. That is where the door swings shut. Go ahead and swing that shut. And that is all of the height we have to put in any flooring we would want. So I don't know if you care about any of this or if you can even hear me over the rain on the metal roof. But um, we were at a bit of a dilemma for the floor. So the plan today is to hopefully finish the wall insulation back there and continue to put up the wood on the walls themselves and get that part done. Hopefully it will start raining so we can cut, or stop raining rather, so we can cut outside. Before we get started on the paneling, we're gonna install a plug right here because this is where my uh, work table is going to sit. So I need a plug for the griddles. The plug works. Yay! <laughs> the sun is peeking through, so we're switching gears. Got the saw out. And trying to make, not to make you dizzy, we're going to cut some wood panels for the walls while the sun is out and it's dry. Okay, moving on to plan D, E, F, I don't know now. It is raining again, so we are now going to try to take out the wood stove there. 
Here we go. Hello. Hello. There is a hole now. <laughs> ah! Well, it has been quite the adventure this weekend. Um, I don't know if you can see that back there, but that is my uh, slate countertop. It is not in the area that it is going to go in, but I did get the white cabinets and the slate counter moved in, or I shouldn't say I, I should say Matt <laughs> actually moved them in. Um, I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you how the space is coming along. It's getting there. It's a very slow, slow process. All right, I think this is the best angle. Hopefully you can hear and it's not too noisy outside, but you can see up here, that green insulation, ignore the cord hanging up there, but that green insulation that's in the ceiling and quite a bit of that is done. The pink insulation up there in the loft area is not staying up there. It's just where we're storing it for the time being. And then you can see more green insulation here. That still needs to get put up. But this wall over here and the back wall has all of the wall boards on it. So that was some good progress. This wall over here, obviously you can see, oh, we did get to the insulation over on this side here. So that is done and there's, um, the vapor barrier on this half. These wall boards here are going to go on that wall. But we've got some good progress going. I have no idea what I'm gonna do with this floor. I wanna try to put some sort of barrier insulation down, but let me get down here and show you. This is the threshold to this door so i don't i have like an inch and a half space i hardly have any space basically a two by four space so if anybody has any suggestions let me know all right i think this is where i'm going to leave you for this video in the middle of the construction zone here i hope you did enjoy coming along if you did you know what to do by now smash that thumbs up button it really really does help me out again thanks so very much for coming along we'll talk to you soon bye for now